it's objectively true. We can know what a contradiction is. There's no contradictions in it. We know the law of contradiction. We know um, <clears throat> what a error is and mistakes. There's no mistakes in it. It's not like one minute it says this and then it gets it wrong or so on and so forth. So we, kn I know what I'm talking about. Does that make sense? So I'm saying this is objectively true, yeah, and it's objectively verifiable. That it hasn't. It's been preserved. And I saw your friend nodding. Why did you nod? I don't know. I'm just curious as to like. Because you didn't ask if for my proof. I'm, I'm going to provide my proof. say that's right and it's obviously unedited, which I do agree with, but are you in doing so saying every other religion is wrong? No, but it has been translated. The Christian Bible is not what it was. Yeah. And by the way, know, like to be so much, academically it's fair, it's meaning, right? there, there you go, there yeah. you go. Okay. To be academically fair, just because something... If I believed in God, I feel like I would follow Islam. To be honest, I just yeah. don't believe in God. <laughs> but why don't you believe in God? Where did That's I what know, I'm saying. That's, I just literally cannot wrap my head around there, there being a God. Yeah. So, Your proof is a book, but I read books all the time. Well, that's not... No, that's not, that's, that's, not my, that's not my proof. My, my proof is preservation. My proof is the fact that it talks about subjects it shouldn't know. For example, it talks yeah, about embryology 1,400 yeah. years ago, yeah. where... Um, Professor Keith Moore, leading embryological expert, was given this information and he said it's not possible for anyone to know this when they didn't have microscopes. Yeah. It talks about embryology and um, how the womb, the, sorry, the fetus is formed, the eight stages, and it talks about it in the exact order it happens. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, you can get one thing right, it's a fluke, yeah, no, I, but I, then, you I, right, I then you get that right, and then you get that right, and then you get that right, and then you're talking about how Allah will bring you back to life down to the tips of your fingers, mm. yeah? With your bones have turned into dust and you think like, okay, um, why, why talk about fingertips 1400 years ago? And now we realize every single human being, the fingertips is different, mm. yeah? So, <clears throat> believing in God, the argument the Quran uses is, the, is ask, did you create, your, um, did you come from nothing? Yeah, so now we know from nothing comes nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Then it says, did you create yourself? Yeah, and then that's a logical fallacy because it means you didn't exist. You came into existence to create yourself. It's like criminal saying a mother that gave birth to herself. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, and then it says you have no certainty. So the fact of the matter is, at least you're honest. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. But I'm saying um, that lack of certainty. I would say is that look, you haven't actually spent time thinking about it. Yeah. Because yeah. if I was to say, sorry, I don't mean no, to be no, like rude. I don't. I don't mean, I don't mean a disrespectful way. I mean in the sense that, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean in the sense that, look, <clears throat> if I was to say that it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator yeah. than to believe something came from nothing. Yeah, that's my claim. And I would say that, look, my definition of the creator, um, Allah, is <clears throat> something outside of the universe something powerful, something independent, yeah? There's more definitions, but just based on that, would you have an issue to say that, look, to believe in that's what caused the universe? No, I don't have an issue with it at all. I mean, I don't know what... <coughs> now, we, now, now we can build yeah, on that, yeah. because the reason I say a creator of the universe, something independent, because right now, <coughs> the world has a, lot of a whole lot of dependent things. Yeah, you've got us. We need oxygen. Oxygen. You need the trees to like taking the carbon monoxide and get that oxygen. And then the trees need the sun, and the sun needs that, and the this, that, that. These are all dependent things. And I'm thinking, if we took that to its natural progression, if this depends on that, this depends on that, this depends on that, and then the universe depends on something, then what? Like you need something that's independent to put all of this into motion, or never begin to exist. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it took, I'll be honest with you, it took me a while to actually get I'm like, okay, because I heard an infinite regress, this, that, and I'm like, okay, so that's what it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it make sense? And I can imagine, um, this isn't a foreign concept to you, that's how you get it. But when it comes to someone for the first time, it's like, whoa, this is like, I don't get it, like, what do you mean? And da, da, da. But I'm saying that, look, <clears throat> at the end of the day, going back to my claim, it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than to believe the universe came from nothing. And then who created God? Yeah, the obvious next that's question. That's always, yeah. <laughs> and that's it's fine. That is. But it's... So did Allah come from nothing? 
No, no, no. Allah didn't come from nothing. That means Allah began to exist. Allah is the eternal. Because there's a four line definition of Allah given in the Quran. Um, chapter 112 it says, Allah is uniquely one. He's self sustaining eternal. He doesn't have offspring, nor was he born, and there's nothing comparable to him, nothing equal to him. So when you ask the question, um, who created Allah? It's like, it doesn't make sense because Allah is uncreated. Because you need something which is independent, something outside of the universe, to create the universe. Or otherwise the universe wouldn't exist. Oh, the atoms collided and this created the atom. No, atoms created? Atoms <laughs> created, um, collided. And then this created the atoms and this created that, and this created that, and this created that. And if this continued forever, it would never exist. Simple example. Um, <clears throat> I need your permission to read the Quran okay. and then you need to ask her permission and she needs to ask the person <laughs> she needs to ask the person behind her and she needs to ask the person behind them and that continues forever yeah. Yeah. would I ever get to read the Quran? Yeah, no. I wouldn't so when you ask the question who created God who created God that created God who created God that created God who created Allah that created Allah who created Allah who created Allah, who created Allah? Yeah. and if this continues forever you never begin to uh, think so I'm happy with the definition given in the Quran the perfectly preserved scripture that says um, and my evidence for the perfectly preserved is <coughs> we have over 200 million people have memorized the Quran word for word let for letter in the language it was preserved in in the language it was revealed in which is Arabic the Prophet Muhammad spoke Arabic the Quran is in Arabic 200 million people we have um, if you google Quran Birmingham manuscript we've got a Quran in Birmingham University that's been carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad this is non-Muslim academics 1400 years ago that's not even Muslim saying it it's not it's non-Muslim scholars because I could I could cite yeah, but I believe in like the prophets and everything that they existed. You know, like yeah. I believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you believe that, then it necessitates, um, and you believe in the Quran, mm. yeah. So then, what's stopping you from believing what they uh, teach is the oneness I of God? I just cannot wrap my head around there being a God. Like, what does What does that mean? I know, I elaborate on that. I literally just cannot. My brain won't let me believe. I. When I was young, we were raised Catholic, and I used to <coughs> beg to believe in God. Like, I prayed to God that I would believe in God, and I just never could. I don't know. Yeah. I love that. But like, I love religion. Like, I think, you know, and I do love yeah. religion. Let me, let me, let me. I respect it. Like, you know. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. I think what happens is a lot of people and reject. We were raised in Catholic Church. I don't know if you've heard about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll get the controversy there. Yeah. Yeah. In Ireland. No, 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 enough said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enough said. Yeah, don't, yeah. You don't need to elaborate. Um, <laughs> look, I think I would struggle to believe in the God that you've been introduced to. Yeah. yeah? And I, as, I, as a Muslim, I reject the God that you was introduced yeah. to. A God that became a man. Mm. A God that dies on the cross. Mm. A God that um, is all loving but then there's all this evil that takes place. Yeah. Now, Islam, we have ways to actually um, come to terms with all these things. We don't, we don't have the issues that other religions have with their deities. Like the Bible says, God created the world in six days, rested on the seventh. We don't have that concept. <coughs> Allah doesn't need to rest. Yeah. I always get, yeah, huh? yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they, these things will be like, yeah, like, yeah, my God's not blue. My God doesn't have six arms with an elephant head. My God doesn't like, do you know what I mean? Mm. Blue eyes, blonde hair with, uh, in the desert, like, and dying on the cross yeah. and so on and so forth. Like, no, my God is uniquely one. And we as Muslims worship the creator, not the creation. Yeah. So when it's like, <clears throat> the concept of God that you're rejecting, I'll be honest with you, I'll probably reject the same concept you have. Mm. So let's start from a blank slate. Yeah? And that's why I only mention a few of the three attributes. Powerful, yeah? mm. intelligent, yeah? independent. Yeah? Can we agree on that? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah? So then let's agree on a few other things like um, all knowing, wise. Because you know, I was saying that as Muslims, we don't have this issue, the problem of evil. It's because we don't just believe Allah is all loving. Allah is all loving, but Allah is all knowing. Allah is all just, yeah? I had somebody ask me a question. I don't want to really open up a new can of worms, right? <laughs> but I just said like, I don't, for me, someone who's born and brought up in the West, I don't see that as an issue due to the fact that <clears throat> it's been legislated by the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now, if I don't have good reasons to believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth, then I can denounce and reject the rules and regulations and so on and so forth. Yeah? But I'm saying that, look, everyone's like, give me proof, give me evidence. Yeah, and I'm giving you proof, I'm giving you evidence, and you're agreeing with it. Yeah, I'm giving you a tangible thing. Like, imagine I said something happened 1400 years ago. Believe it. I'm not like, here. Look, take yeah, it. I'm yeah. gonna. By the way, I'm gonna give this to you oh, free of charge. Yeah, this is for you. Sure? Yeah, I need a second one. Hold on. Oh, where's, my, so where's, where's my other hand? I need to clap. You have one? Huh? We will see. Never Quran. Is the yeah. rules while reading it? Um, the rules is you need to know how the vowels and the consonants add and yeah, the sounds right. that make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. It's not. It's not even that. It, there, there are. There are levels. No, no, no. Not even that. Like that's when you're doing the actual prayer five times a day. But this is an English translation. Yeah. So this is. So is. Has different rules. Huh? Has that lasted? No, it's not. It's direct, directly translated from the original text. Where so Arawa this has been translated 20 million times. Yeah, it's a from ancient languages that we don't even speak anymore. Yeah, thanks very much. Here you go, madam. You. So basically, Jesus spoke Aramaic, disciples spoke Hebrew. The oldest version now of the Bible you have is Greek or Latin, I forget. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, and then it's there. translated to English. So you have got translation of a translation of a translation of a translation. So it's well lost. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. yeah. From, from dead languages. Yeah, and Aramaic is a lost language as well. Yeah. The Quran is Arabic because we memorized it per beta, um, we preserved the Arabic language. So now this is from Arabic to English. Just one straight translation. Yeah. That's it. Do I mean? And, and then it's like. <coughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. And there's no, there's no like misinterpretation or um, errors when it comes to translation and interpretation due to the fact that we've got like. One verse um, is a, what's the word? Think of Arabic words now. Yeah. Um, it, it, it kind of describes and it gives a meaning to the other words. The, the translate, the, each verse connects with another verse, basically. Mm -hmm. So we use the Quran to translate the Quran. Yeah? Yeah. Then you've got the understanding of the Prophet Muhammad. Then you've got the understanding of the companions, yeah? um, which isn't overruled by the understanding of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But I mean, um, so, coming back to why you can't believe in God, tell me, give me, give me, give me a reason. I, I, even, I can't explain it in words, I just... Do you want to draw it? Do you want to draw it? I'll give you a pen and paper, and just like some yeah. crayons or paint, yeah, paintbrushes. Yeah, I think because it's a Catholic God, and it just doesn't make sense to me that we can sin and do whatever we want on earth, and then as long as you're sorry when you're dead, all is forgiven. <coughs> it's like, well, obviously you're going to be sorry when you meet the Creator. <laughs> there you go. So then, that's an interesting concept, because in Islam, and so, funnily enough, someone asked me this exact same question today, and we don't, we don't have that concept in Islam. Yeah. So in Islam, it's like, look, if you've sinned, um, you can ask for forgiveness, but there's a per period of forgiveness that Allah can choose to use. Mm. So if you've wronged by Allah, Allah can forgive you. Yeah. But for example, the example the other person I spoke to said was murder. Yeah. So now for Allah to forgive you, you've wronged somebody else. It's not for Allah to forgive you because yeah. you've wronged somebody else. Yeah that person can choose to forgive you. Yeah. So what could happen is they could forgive you or um, they could give you their good deeds or take your bad deeds. Yeah? Or there's a period of purification that takes place. So again, this comes back to the justice of Allah. Yeah? Now there's one sin that Allah will not forgive. Yeah? And this is very controversial and I really shouldn't be saying this to you. And I should let you go and you're going to read the Quran. But I want to be honest with you, does it make sense? And I don't think there's anything in Islam, where with a healthy understanding, you're going to reject or have an issue with, right? <clears throat> the fundamental, the greatest sin, which is unforgivable in the sight of Allah, is disbelief. 
Disbelief. Disbelief. Not believing in Allah, not making partners with Allah, um, worshipping other than Allah. And I saw a look from your friend. <laughs> what, what went through your head? Um, well, firstly, do you believe in a... Does Islam believe in a heaven? And hell, yeah. Right, so if I... And I don't believe, yeah. what does that mean for me when I die? <clears throat> that means if you die upon this belief, then you wouldn't have met the criteria to enter paradise. So I'm gone down. Yeah, you're going to a warm place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, However, yeah, out of Allah's mercy, um, hell wasn't made for people. Does that make sense? It's more like a deterrent. Yeah, and you're thinking to yourself, but look, I don't believe. But look, I've given you good reason to believe. I've had this conversation with you. Yeah, yeah? I shouldn't be here. I literally finished work, had a conversation. I was about to leave. And then I don't, I don't, I'm not here on Fridays. Yeah. My days are Wednesdays. Yeah. So why, why am I here having this conversation with two people who are probably in a rush to go somewhere else on a Friday night? Does that make sense? No, no, no. <laughs> that, that, does that make sense? So I'm saying that look, why are you watching random stuff about Islam and people reading the Quran on your, well, on your social media? And they have such strong faith and it just makes me want to have that faith. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And. <clears throat> I have another I've, question on the head, the from hell thing. So, from my understanding, just yeah. because I live with a Muslim girl and I, I learn quite a lot from her, yeah. at the end of the day, the Jewish God, the Christian God, Islamic God, the God itself is all from the same source. Okay. The, the stories, the telling, the yeah. prophets, different, but it all comes back to the same yeah, 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 hierarchy. Yeah. So if somebody believed in God as a Christian <coughs> or as a Jew, would they not? Would they get let in? Even though it's different teachings. They it's wouldn't not, be it, the word of Allah. Though. Yeah. Yeah, because what happened was, like you said, all the messengers of God, we, yeah. we share them. So Abraham, Moses, yeah, exactly. Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad, they all came with the same concise message from God. Yeah. But then when man-made elements got into it, it's natural fitra. It's natural, we're born upon, Allah created us to be good, to um, believe in one creator, to want to worship that one creator. When you ask a child, is there a creator? They're going to say, yeah, there's a God. I believe in God. Yeah. Then society corrupts them. Yeah, my God is Jesus. He was a man with long hair and died on the cross. Like, that's not natural. Yeah. Um, where's the creator? You ask a child who's got pure fitra, where's the creator? They'll say, yeah. They're not going to say everywhere. Where's the credit? They're not gonna like it's not pantheism, it's not like everywhere. God is not in my pocket. Does it make sense? When someone says, um, where is God? Now like, God is everywhere, I'll be like, is God in my pocket? Is, is God in my hand? So it doesn't make like, even you're laughing. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it, that, no. We know that look, the creator is above his creation. Yeah. Um, and even the Quran it talks about how um, the Quran came down, the mercy descends. I mean, these are all signs, and Allah's above His throne. I don't want to go too deep into theology, yeah, right? No, I could send it all day. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but <laughs> to answer your question is, it comes to a point where there's elements of the truth that they reject to right. follow the desire, yeah. to follow the whatever man-made thing, loyalty to parents. Even one conversation I was having it was heartbreaking. It's like she believed in everything. She wants to be a Muslim. She's like, yeah, I want to be a Muslim. Um, but I'm too loyal to my dad. She literally just said that because my dad's not Muslim and he's going to get offended if I become... And I'm like, but then that's not you submitting your will to the Creator. Does it make sense? Um, so I would say that, look, <clears throat> think to yourself, look into Islam, read the Quran. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think know. What's your name? Ridwan. Ridwan. And your name? Nicola. Nicola? Yeah. Karen. Karen. So, Karen. We know, we know what, what um, Nicola's belief is and she's not ready to believe in God just yet but she's not fully rejecting it either yeah? and I think at the moment we've agreed on a few attributes um, yeah, just, just one more question Nicola, one more question um, so yeah, <clears throat> you know now that I've kind of briefly clarified that look there's criteria sent to paradise, you just forget, asking for forgiveness when you die um, wouldn't be sufficient. And I think I touched upon the thing that, look, um, the greatest sin, 
and um, Karen, I asked you, like, why did you pull that face? And the reason I ask is, why wouldn't that be the greatest sin? Who are you sinning against? Look at how much corruption is being caused and how it's impacting people's lives by not worshipping the Creator. Do you disagree with me? No thoughts on it, really. Yeah. No, no pressure. <laughs> I just chucking you in the deep end. And the reason I ask that is when we follow our desires, or when we follow like, okay, this is what I think is right. Yeah. Then at a certain point, greed comes in. Power corrupts us. But the legislator, the creator, of heavens, the earth, when they've said this is right, this is always going to be right said this is wrong, this is always going to be wrong, this is objectively wrong now. It's no, no longer subjective. Because whatever you feel, and yourself, and myself, yeah, without religion, think is good, can I guarantee it's going to be good in a hundred years time? Can I say that is what I think is good right now, is it good in another part of the world? Yeah. What I think is good right now, um, in another society, if I woke up on the other side of the bed, would I still think it's good? So I'm saying that, look, Allah has given us an objective way of living, which is going to be beneficial for us and all of humanity. And when we go against that, and we choose to disbelieve, and we don't submit to the Creator, then we're going to follow our desires. We're going to f um, follow money or so on and so forth, and then spread corruption. And I'm saying then that's why I would argue um, it's like through my logic and my intellect and my logic is fallible that disbelief in Allah is the greatest sin. Does that make sense? And obviously Allah said so. <laughs> so that's the foundation and I'm just building upon that foundation. Do you know what I mean? Which is, so then, yeah, that's where peace comes from, worshipping the Creator as well. So, Karen. Do you believe in God? <clears throat> no, I'd love to as well. Like it is, I respect it so much, and I understand. I understand it, and I try and learn as much as I can about it, and the different religions at that, because there is so many, and mm. you can't you can't just pick one. Knowing, I for me, it seems impossible to say, okay, I know, and I know about the Quran. I haven't the read the Quran said, yet. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I appreciate yeah, that. She, um, she's on my team now. <laughs> without having learned everything about everything, yeah. it's so hard to pin. Like, it's just there's just too much, too much of everything, and too much. Like, it's you were raised Muslim, correct? You yeah. always were. This is that. That's that. That's that. But, and I love that you have that, and that faith is yours. But for me, I've never <coughs> been like that. Ah, it's not even that, just to add a bit of nuance to that. Being born in a Muslim family, um, if I didn't do independent research, mm. I don't think I'll still be a Muslim. Mm. Yeah. Really? yeah, yeah, I'm a second generation um, Bengali yeah. from immigrant family, came to this country and the Christians, the belief they had and their reasoning for why they believed was sufficient for them yeah. by, in Bangladesh. Yeah, right? whole different story. And, now here. and then now I'm in the UK, and then I want to ask a question. And firstly, I couldn't even articulate Bengali. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, um, they're like, no, it doesn't matter. You have to believe you're going to go to hellfire. And then all that kind of rhetoric really pull, pushed me away from Islam. And I'm like, I don't really want to believe in a creator that's like, just going to send me to hell for asking a question. Does that make sense? Because dialogue isn't um, going to send you to hell. Asking questions for the in intention to learn, to understand, challenging God for the purpose of understanding. There's no issue. Does that make sense? Because yeah. Islam is a religion for intellect. Allah is asking you to ponder, to reflect. Yeah? Once you've asked all of your questions and you're satisfied, then believe. Does that make sense? Until then, ask, question, challenge. And then, that's not, that's not the Islam I was taught at home. Does that make yeah. sense? So me doing independent research like several years later, and I went through many journeys, and I'm quite embarrassed actually mentioning it on camera, but no, I went, I went through a journey and it was just, um, so I wouldn't say it was like me being born into it. Yeah. Um, and I would say that, look, honestly speaking, I don't, being, I don't think you're being, I think you're being disingenuous. Do you? Yeah. 
Because I think when it comes to, you don't need to know everything. How many things do you know is uh, right? That's, my, that's the way my brain works. That's, yeah. And by the way, I could be wrong. Yeah, that's maybe. That's the way my brain works. I, I, I believe. Yeah, I know, but. There's many positions you hold and you are not an expert on that topic. You don't know everything about that. You're not like, you haven't looked into everything and said, this is right and this is why I'm doing that. Does that make sense? Um, so I don't know why, and this is why I mean disingenuous, that you're applying such a high threshold when it comes to faith and religion. But do you not have such a high threshold yourself in your own faith? Like people who believe and who believe, truly believe in, in their own religion, it's not just Islam or whatever. They have such a strong belief in it that they know categorically they are right and their God exists or whoever exists, they know so strongly. That's, and in order to meet, for me to have such a strong emotion, I need to... That's a separate point, by the way. I need to stop way. worrying, have a question about it. I need to know for sure X, Y, Z is exactly what But that's not, that's not what you're saying. That's my, if you want certainty, what is your requ requirement for you to be certain that Allah exists? Islam is true. I'd either like to meet him in the flesh yeah. or any concrete proof. Okay, now I've heard people make that statement as well, right? If you met God in the flesh, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. he was like schizophrenic or something. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. And then it wouldn't be a test of faith anyways. If God appeared in front of you. Then then what? What would you want? A miracle. Prove your God. What miracle would you want? Something that's um, timeless and something, um, something miraculous. And you're holding in your hands. Something that's per legitly perfectly preserved. No contradictions in it. Talks about subjects as a professional. Because it created all of these subjects. Yeah. I'm happy to have a conversation with you after okay, this conversation. Let's do this, let's do this. Uh, I dare you, after I've finished this conversation, me and you're going to have a conversation. Okay. Yeah? Give me, give me the... Be confident enough to have that conversation with me and then we'll see how much evidence you speak with and how much evidence I come with. Is that a deal? Yeah, Is that I a deal? Talk to them as well. Because you they are no, kind I'm of okay. yeah, <laughs> See, he didn't want to shake hands on it. So thank you very much. You go. You can you can speak to this gentleman if you like, because I would like yeah, to finish can, my conversation. That's why I offered my hands to you. I'm saying that I will speak to you. Yeah. You speak. You bring your evidence. I'll bring my evidence. Yeah, okay. Are you willing to do that? Yeah. I'll shake on it then. Okay. <laughs> Let me finish speaking to them, and then I'll speak to you one on one, or five on one. I don't have issue. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying? Uh, you were saying. Was I saying? I you don't know saying. what I was saying. <laughs> um, evidence, God appearing in front of you, and I said, what yeah, proof yeah, would you yeah, want? Yeah. You would want a miracle. And then I'm saying that you're holding the miracle in your hands. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. again, my level of conviction, because I was clear in regards to what I need for my conviction. Yeah? This book needed to be perfectly preserved. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, if you watch any of my videos, everyone's going to be like, hey, just... Is it on YouTube? It's on YouTube, yeah. Okay. Um, Dawa to Soul and Sam Dawa. Yeah. Soul. I need that written down. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you guys can make a note of it. And Sam Dawa, and Dawa is spelled D-A-W-A-H. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's like, they're probably thinking like, he just keeps saying the same thing, because this is my criteria, I've got it memorised. Yeah. My criteria is, it needs to be perfectly preserved. And this is the only scripture actually, ironically, um, everyone will say I'm making a Quranic argument, yeah? But this is coming through my own criteria, which alhamdulillah goes with the Quran. The Quran says it's from Allah, Allah will preserve it. And if it was from anyone other than Allah, there will be contradictions in it, there will be errors in it. So my criteria is, it needs to be perfectly preserved, yeah? There can't be any mistakes in it, and the message needs to be perfect. Practically doing it brings happiness to people, do you know what I mean? There's nothing in Islam which is forbidden, which is good for you. And there's nothing promoted in Islam um, which is bad for you. Now, um, you might think like, yeah, if I did this, um, it makes me happy. I'm talking, yeah, short-term happiness, perhaps. Long-term, yeah, it's going to lead to destruction. Yeah? 
So what would you need? What is your level of criteria for you to actually believe in a creator? Because you can't, you can't say that, look, we, you can say whatever you want, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look into every single religion. Yeah. And then what? Why don't you have, uh, figure out, okay, it needs to make sense, it needs to be coherent, it needs to be preserved. These are my criteria. Whatever religion meets that criteria, I'm going to submit to it. Well, we have reading to do. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Say it by the Nicola. <laughs> no problem. We're here every Saturdays, and I'm going to. You can, you can ease up on this conversation. Oh, yeah. when you, were you lot going to. Flying back to Ireland yeah. tomorrow, so this was quite the chance. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any questions for me before you go? It would be good to see the full process of. Islanders. Is that what you guys are called? <laughs> Islanders. I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Irish, sorry, sorry, that's okay. I'm you up. I'm you up, I'm you up. Yeah, I don't know. I will get back to you. Mm. I'll write you a comment it... on your YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please verify his, his claims about the preservation of the Quran because it's currently that's bullshit. He's just currently. Okay, sir, 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 wait, wait, while we're here, sir, get your phone out. Google Quran Birmingham manuscript. Do it now, sir. Embarrass me. Embarrass me. Pardon? What about you Google Samarkand coffee Quran, which has uh, key textual differences from the modern Quran? What, what are you talking about, sir? Right now, you asked me to back up my claim. Which Quran? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You asked me to back up my claim, so discredit my claim. Quran, Birmingham manuscript. Anyway, I'm not happy to be recorded because last time I, I discussed with someone from... I don't know who someone is, so I've never met you. The, the You've never met me, so you can't conflate whoever you spoke anyway, to. Uh, this is this is going to be on camera, sir. So I wouldn't... to discuss with me, it has to be without recording. I'm happy to do that after you've responded to kind of trying to embarrass me here. And I've asked you to pull out your phone, Quran, Birmingham manuscript, and then see what part of my claim is incorrect. Is non-Muslim academic saying it's preserved? Yes or no? Yeah, are non-Muslim academic saying it's been perfectly preserved? Not perfectly preserved, preserved to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As well as, because I don't want to say perfectly, because I don't know if that's the rhetoric they would use, but it's been carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is in another way, perfectly preserved. Yeah, yeah. Semantics. Well, thank you but, but, for but the Quran no wasn't problem, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Thank during you. the life of the Prophet Muhammad. To be recorded. Why not? You were, you were aware that the two ladies that he was speaking yeah. to is recorded. Yeah. Uh, Why not? Mm, that's a good Are point. You about the compilation of the Quran? <laughs> yes, you tell me, explain to me. Well, the first caliph after the death of the I didn't ask about the first caliph. I asked you about the second. What do you know about the basics? The do, you know, do you know the reason why? Because what I tend to find is... Sorry, people. I... Wait, one second, one second. People like to throw up these jargon terms. You know, there's different Qur'ans, etc. I just want to... Uh, let's go back to the foundation. Yeah? You no, know, because he's read how something the... and I know what he's going to say. Gonna say. <laughs> so, so how do we funny. Muslims... How, how is the Qur'an transmitted? You asked about the compilation of the Quran. Can you, can you respond to that or are you going, are you going to... Yeah, he's, 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 he's talking about it. I'm asking about the transmission of the Quran. How was the Quran You asked transmitted? about the compilation. Do you know about the compilation? Yes. Go on, explain to me. The first caliph after the death, death of Muhammad gathered uh, the followers of, uh, of Muhammad and, uh, and tried to get from them what they remembered. Because What's the, his name? Because no one person remembered everything, right? What's his name? Uh, don't interrupt me, please. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the people who remember... By the way, that's of, incorrect, of, by the way. Uh, ...of uh, Muhammad's supposed revelation, uh, recited uh, those parts... I'm going to interrupt and, you uh, when you make a false claim. You just make false claims. No, no, you have, we have individuals who have it's memorized sad. the entire Qur'an. So we don't need to get people who've memorized different chapters. Do you know what half is? Abu Bakr even said that uh, there is a surah which has been regret regrettably forgotten and he uh, cited a line or two from this surah and this surah was lost. So, so because you say something, so you say something and I'm meant to no, just Abu believe Bakr, you. Abu Bakr said that. How do you, do you know? know? Well, give me, give me reference. I, 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 I'm, I'm not happy to be recorded. Why not? And, uh, you're you're well, you're happy to. You have to substantiate your claim. So, you claims. can find it on the internet. No, no. <laughs> Look at him. Absolutely. Was that the best? Absolutely. Was that, yeah, was that the best you could do? That's the best you could do. 
best you could do. Just... That's embarrassing. That was embarrassing, man. Oh, now he came, he came, and I thought no, 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 he was going to come with something. Oh my God. SubhanAllah, that this, this was embarrassing, man, because right now. So embarrassing. He's saying, like in the time of the Prophet, وسلم, we didn't have people who memorized the entire Quran per baitum, which is first a mis, um, misquote, it's incorrect. Yeah. And he's. Subhan, these people, they have the audacity to say these things. They say one or two Arabic words, yeah? And then he's standing here, trying to correct me, saying, who was the name, what was the name of your second Khalifa? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm telling him that, look, challenge my knowledge or challenge Quran Birmingham manuscript. And then he's, he's reciting whatever he's saying and he's like trying to bamboozle people. But the reality is, Akhi, Bismillah, let you finish him off, bro. So, Masha'at Baga, Brother Ridwan gave beautiful da'wah to the two ladies. May Allah Azawajal guide them. May Allah accept Brother Ridwan's da'wah. Very amen. nicely, um, you know, very nice conversation. And then this clown just comes. He listened for a while. I thought, okay, he's, he's, a, he's an observant. And then all of a sudden, he's making these, you know, these shot, shotgun tactics. Sorry, Akhi. Yeah. He, there was a, they were in a uniform, right? Did you see what his jacket said? What did it say? There was a group of them and then they were going to walk in front of the camera. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure if the camera picked it up. They said, oh, do you mind if we um, background, what did they call it when people stand in the background? Like in movies? Oh. So oh. they just want to disturb the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're organized enough. And then once I'm going to get into a conversation, I don't want to be filmed. <laughs> you seeing us filming it and then um, your colleagues who are there trying to disturb the video, yeah, yeah. yeah and then he's saying, I'm not going to be filmed. You've funny, never met. I, this is the funniest conversation we've had. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Salaamu Alaikum. May Allah bless you, bro. Salaamu Alaikum, No problem, bro. Go on, Akhi. So, uh, forgive me, forgive me for interrupting you, no, no, but no, I'll finish off the point. Some people like you. Yeah, yeah. So, so <coughs> he, he, I thought, we thought he was an observant. He's listening to the conversation. And then within two minutes, he, he was just saying to the ladies, oh, the Quran is not preserved, it's BS and all of that. Oh, you can, it's so easy for you to make these claims. And then afterwards, when Ridwan said, let's have a conversation, you bring your evidence and I bring my evidence. Let me finish the discussion with the ladies. And as soon as, as, soon as Ridwan said that, the gentleman said, no, 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 I don't want to be recorded. I don't want to be recorded. And you're already aware that you're being recorded. What a disingenuous fool, honestly. <sighs> Subhanallah, man. Subhanallah. Preservation of the Quran. Okay, he's talking about Samarkand and all of this, yeah? First of all, the primary transmission of the Quran is oral, it's memorized. Yeah, Jibrail alayhi salam, he conveyed the Quran, the speech of Allah to the Prophet. The Prophet memorized, then he dictated to the companions. You had Zayb, uh, Zayb bin Thabit, you had Umar bin Khattab, they all memorized. And then we have even the chains of transmission called Ijaza. Even till now, if you go to Mauritania, you don't even need Mus'haf, you don't even need script. It's all, it's memorized through, it's, it's, it's preserved through memorization. So for him to bring up about, you know, written manuscripts and all of that, these are just secondary evidence for us. But the primary evidence is oral transmission. It's, it's, um, it's, it's based on uh, uh, mutawatir, master transmitted, which means that it cannot, it cannot even be possible for these verses to be conspired because it's, in, it's, um, it's, it's verified from independent chains. SubhanAllah. Yeah, that's it. That's it, man. The people who compiled it, they were confident in the memory. It was memorized. However, for the higher standard that Islam we hold things to, we still had several people um, coming with the verses. Yes. Not out of necessity, because people have already memorized it verbatim. Yes. So people have memorized it directly from the mouth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wasallam. They yeah. taught it, and you have several people who memorize it verbatim from um, this Sahaba who learn it directly. Who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he's like this person knows the Quran the best. Yes. And then now. We're getting several people quoting those verses just to add more validity. Yes. But they're going to come and take hadiths out of context and just try to confuse the masses. And I'm like, brother, come on, this is a, we're here. This, is not no, this ain't no random person you're speaking to. <laughs> I was here I, I, giving dawah. Don't, don't try these techniques with us, man. It, it, like, you know, it, it, go, go back to your Islamic phobic, Islamophobic websites and then 
you know what I mean? Regurgitate that rubbish. He, he, look, he depicted um, uh, insecurity. That's all he can do, shotgun, shotgun tactics. I could do that. Does that make me right? <laughs> Whoever's seen my videos, you see that I will come and I would hold the Quran to a certain standard. At no point did he make a claim that what he believes and the scripture he follows, what preservation it is. Yeah, yeah. And say, oh, my scripture, my Bible is so highly preserved, your standard, your Quran is below that standard. No, your standard, you don't even have a standard. And then you try to criticize the standard the Quran is on, where you don't even have a legal yeah, yeah, standard. Yeah, I, I will add one so thing. Do you, do you get that? I understand. And one more thing before we conclude. I, I would... Um, I, I would quote from Professor Bart Ehrman. As you know, Pro Professor Bart Ehrman is a, is a scholar in the New Testament. And when he heard about the Birmingham manuscript, which, uh, as you said correctly, is commendated uh, within the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So between 568 CE to, I think, fi um, to, sorry, yeah, 568 to 650. So it's well within the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So you had uh, Surah Maryam, you had Surah Taha. Uh, yeah, I think, so, so, yeah, Surah, Surah Maryam, Surah Taha, Surah 19, Surah 20, which is exactly the same as what we are reciting today, Alhamdulillah, right? What, when he found out, when he found out that these Birmingham manuscripts goes back to the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you know what he said? He said, it's absolutely amazing because when, I, when we have the New Testament, we don't, even have, we don't even have a single extent manuscript that goes back to the first century. And the size of is 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 size of a credit card. In a language which is a translation of translation. Exactly. Translation. And you know what? We have more than dozens of extant manuscripts of the Quran that is within the first century Hijri. Within the light of the Sahaba and the Tabi'in. And I don't know if I emphasize this enough Aki. SubhanAllah. Really I'm referencing Quran Birmingham manuscript because yeah. I'm in the UK. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even referencing um, Muslim resources in the university in Cairo or yes. uh, museums in Turkey. Does that make sense? But alhamdulillah, this guy is running away. I was hoping of a It was so funny. Kind of entertaining, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That was so funny. <laughs> that was so 